Okay, so where we ended up, um, when we ended up with this was, um, I was looking at U38 here, and you can see that I've actually removed U38 off the, the sheet. What I did is I checked um, connectivity from 2 to 5 and 8, because they're the two switches. And this was tied to ground, and both of these were tied to ground at the same time from inside that um, uh, relay. Now, that was occurring whether the relay was turned on, off, uh, whatever. Uh, interestingly, uh, this, the two control lines, uh, A and B, were at uh, plus 9 and minus 9, whereas the data sheet says it should be uh, 5 volts and 0 volts. So I'm not sure if there's a further problem down the track which actually caused uh, this to fail. I'll need to look into that. But in any case, um, this was clearly not working. So uh, what I did is I took out, uh, I took this out, and you can see that it's out here. And so now what I want to do is to turn the unit on, and we'll let the unit uh, boot up, and then we're going to get all sort of medieval and just simply use a short piece of wire uh, connected across pins 2 and 5 which if you remember from here pins 2 goes to the attenuator and pin 5 is coming in from the 7db attenuator at the front now when this undergoes its uh, you'll see here that it's booting up when it undergoes its um, uh, self test you'll see that it'll fail the self tests here which is what it should do because uh, what it does up here is it changes that calibration signal into uh, this stage in and out as it's uh, testing and it can't do that clearly because it has no um, uh, it has no actual uh, relay there so I think that uh, when it was doing that test it was uh, coming up and um, configuring itself and the relay was giving it uh, the 50 cal signal okay but it wasn't uh, giving it the external signal so let's just wait for it to finish booting and then we'll just do a, a raw test to see if um, uh, the rest of the system is going to read a, uh, a value correctly now remember you know what I've got is I've got 50 on a uh, 50 on 50 megahertz signal coming out of my 8657b and we already measured it in the last video and it's uh, at minus 0.6 uh, db so when we get to the point of being able to look at that as long as we see something around the range of minus 0.6 db then we're reading pretty much the signal that uh, that comes in and here you can start to see the failures as steadying gain and checking amplitudes and things like that which you clearly can't do because it can't set that <coughs> internal calibration signal Okay, so let's set the frequency for 50 megahertz. Yep. 50 megahertz. Okay, you can ignore the error though with the self test things. And so now I'm going to adjust bridge. And let me get my little magnifying glass in here so that we can, so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to bridge from pin 2, which is this guy over here, to pin 5. So let me get pin 5 down first. Right, there we go. And now I'm going to get pin 2. Let me just give some pressure on that. And if we have a look at the front, and I select the marker and search, yeah, we're at minus 1.33 dBm. Given that that's a lump of wire uh, connecting those two, um, probably not and just poked on there probably not a bad uh, result so let's turn that off for the moment and let's see if I go and put from 2 to 
8 and we'll hold that down let's see if we pass the self test Fingers slipping, so let's just get that back up there. Oh. And now you can see, yeah, we're passing a bunch of the self tests again because we have that uh, internal signal. This will probably far because I think I just slipped off the um, the pad. Yeah. Okay. Let me now that we're booted up again. Let me just carefully do this again. Okay. So now it go. System alignments, system alignments, align all now. Frequency 50 megahertz. All right, let me just go in and redo this. So we want pin 5 and pin 2. Yeah, really did not do a good job. Hang on. Now, this could also be a case of the fact that it, when it realigned, when it ran through the alignments again, I didn't have a good cup. I didn't have a good signal, so it may be way low. Uh, let's, there we go. Point seven six. That's better than it was before. All right. Well, that seems to fairly conclusively tie the uh, the issue down to that. Um, to that uh, uh, relay. So I have uh, the replacement relay on order and we'll see what goes on. I might investigate the uh, uh, the voltages as well just to see what goes on uh, to see if I can find any gap because that should be uh, 0 to 5 but maybe minus 9 to 9 is, uh, is by design. I'll look at the rest of the clip and hopefully it'll have some information there. Anyway, I hope you found uh, part 2 uh, interesting and um, uh, I will uh, catch you again when the uh, spare part comes in. All right, bye.